Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen we've got a puzzle by a constructor. Uh, firstly, I admire hugely because every puzzle I've attempted by A Helped has been absolutely brilliant. Um, but secondly, I've started to fear because I've struggled so much with his last two puzzles, uh, both of which contained completely new Sudoku logic, at least to me. Um, so a seriously, seriously brilliant constructor. Um, now, you'll remember that A Help's last appearance of the channel was in a video where Mark um, pranked me by telling me that the puzzle was quite easy when, how can I put this, it wasn't. Um, well, the Deceiver-in-Chief has been busy again. I think that's how we shall refer to Mark from now on. Um, but he, he, he may be being honest about this one. Um, so he tells me that this puzzle is, well, how did he describe it, monumentally brilliant but absolutely impossible. I couldn't even uh, get out of him whether he's actually solved this or not. Uh, I did try and understand whether he'd solved it, but he was, uh, let's just say he was procrastinating. So I'm not sure whether he's done it or whether, you know, he knows how to do it, but he knows something about it, that's for sure. Uh, so what I've decided to do this time is to actually look at this puzzles um, page on Logic Masters Germany to see what it said. Now, what does it say? Uh, well, Firstly, there's no rating on Logic Masters Germany because not enough people have solved it. <laughs> and secondly, all the comments uh, refer to the fact that it's a staggeringly brilliant puzzle with an impossible break-in. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's pretty daunting, I have to say. And it's an extremely hot day here in the UK. Um, so, yeah, if I can't solve it, that's the reason. It's because it's too hot to solve Sudoku today. Um, now, before we start and I tell you the rules, uh, tomorrow is the first of the month. It's the first of August. Um, and that means we'll be releasing our bonus content uh, for patrons of the channel over on Patreon. An August reward, oh my goodness, is it good. We have a uh, Joke van Wienendahl's um, puzzle hunt, uh, which consists of seven uh, in interconnected puzzles with a Bill and Ted theme. Uh, and honestly, I, th this is just such a brilliant set of puzzles. Um, so do check it out. Um, we know you're going to love it. And uh, that's going to be available for anybody who's a patron of the channel at any level. And it'll be interesting to see how many correct solutions we get. Um, we will be... Uh, we'll, we'll give you an update, obviously. We'll let you know. Um, now, what are the rules of A Helps Puzzle? What we've got is um, normal Sudoku rules apply. And then we've got group sums. A number in a small circle indicates the sum of the digits in the cells covered by the corresponding circle. These digits may or may not repeat. Um, okay. Uh, arrow Sudoku. Digits along an arrow must sum to the number in the corresponding circle. So you can see that square, for example, if that was a five, that would mean those two squares have to sum up to five. Um, and in this Sudoku, all group sum clues contain a comparison operator. The clue greater than or equal to 26, for example, that's that one, uh, indicates a sum of at least 26. Well, yeah, okay. An arrow between two cells points to the smaller number. Right, so we can see we've got four dominoes here separated by arrows. These arrows point to the smaller digit. Right, okay, I understand the rules. Do have a go at the puzzle first. To play, you click the link under the video as always. And with that, let's see how we should attack this puzzle. Let's get cracking. Um, now, the 11 clue maybe. So these four cells have to be less than or equal to 11. Ah, but this is a bit... The, the digits... Ah, yeah, okay, the digits may or may not repeat. Okay, so we can have a repeated digit in here. So I, I was about to say this either has to be 1, 2, 3, and 5, or 1, 2, 3, and 4, but it doesn't. Because we can repeat a digit in this 2 by 2 less than or equal to 11 so this could be oh, so this could be a tiny total this could be something like that that adds i mean obviously it could in theory be that if there's a way of disambiguating the deadly pattern but it could certainly be that and that doesn't sum up to much at all that sums up to seven uh right okay so let's delete that and have another think um 26 are ah, greater than or equal to 26 in four cells but again if we can repeat digits here 
I mean, I could put two nines there, and then these two squares, they could actually contain quite small digits. In fact, I mean, if I put an eight in, then one of them could, could even be a one. Oh, that's very unhelpful. So this, um, I don't even know. Do I even know whether there's a nine in this set of cells? Let's have a think about that. So if I put two eights in, 16, no, I don't know. Ah, uh, okay. Now, how do you do this puzzle? You've got, so we've got lots of these two by twos but none of them have a total that is useful at all. You always have, you always have a greater than or less than next to each other. I don't know. I don't think this is the way to start. Let's have a look at the arrow clues. Although I'm actually a bit skeptical these are gonna be helpful. Um, now, so something we can note here, these four cells on the arrow are all in the same box. So we know these digits are all different. So the minimum I could make these add up to would be 10. If I use one, two, three, and four in the yellow cells, that's the minimum. So we know the sum of these circles must be at least equal to 10. And the same is true here by symmetry. So these circles, I mean, even that, that could be three and seven, for example, that would just give us one, two, three, four. Uh, right, okay, that, that also doesn't seem to be how we're meant to attack the puzzle. Right, what we're gonna do now, I think, is I'm gonna, let's find all the cells that are greater than digits. So these four cells are all greater than 26. These are all greater than 19. These are greater than 25. These are greater than 20. So let's have a look and see if we can learn anything about the grid by Now, <laughs> this is a very strange puzzle. That there's just nothing to go on at all. <laughs> I get, I'm so sorry, by the way. I mean, I fully appreciate that there there are lots of things I'm likely to be missing here, and I know it can be frustrating watching me flounder around trying to find logic that you've seen already. But, um. I don't see how I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going to delete all these. I'm going to do the same thing with the less than signs. Um, so let's look at the ones that are all less than. These are less than 21, less than 11, less than 19, less than 15. So let's put those in blue instead. It's just. Well, this 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 is fascinating because this is there is nothing in in this grid i mean it can't it just can't involve these cells there is just nothing i mean that's i presume these cells are here to disambiguate something in the finale um you often see that from constructors and it's certainly we can't start with these inequalities so, I am baffled. How do we how do we do this? I'm going to get rid of this highlighting because again, I just don't understand how that is in any way relevant. So let's carry on thinking. We have got I've got these cells summed to ten at least. Ah, uh, and you can't, of course, you can't ever put a nine in the uh, on the arrow cells because if you do that, you break the total. If I put a nine here, 
I could put a one next to it, but that would still be too high to place in this box. So there is no nine on any of those cells. So nines must live in these cells. Now, can we, if I could get rid of the ones in the corners, then that might be helpful. Uh, problem is, I just, I just don't know where nines are in any of the other boxes at all. I can't, even here, I can't guarantee there's a nine in this two by two. Wow. Wow. Um, there could, there could easily be an eight. Eight one nine here. Is it something to do with the shared cell? So each of these inequalities has a shared cell. Let's look at those. I'll highlight them so I don't have to remember them. Right, so here we've got these four four cells add up to 26 or more. These four cells add up to 21 or less. But this cell counts in both of those equations. Right, well, so we know that the difference between these three cells and these three cells is five or more, I suppose it could be more. So the difference between these cells and these cells is five. Can we deduce anything from that? I don't, know. I don't see how to deduce anything from that. Let's do the same thing here. So we've got, so here, whatever these three squares are, it's got to be eight greater than whatever those three squares are, because of course this is counting in both sums. So this is eight. I'm just marking the differences. Oh, this one. Well, that one's one, okay. And this one, that one's 10, which I can't even write in. <laughs> okay, uh, what will I put in there to indicate that this one is 10? I'll put a one in the corner. Oh, no, 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 no. One in the corner, which I can't even see. Oh, this puzzle is laughing at me. It's just laughing at me. 10 plus 1 plus 5 plus 8. 24. 24. So... Well, let's have a look at this one. This has got to be, these three squares have got to be 10 greater than whatever I put in those three squares. Problem is, I just don't think that is much of a restriction. It's just, I mean, if I knew what this square was, maybe, maybe I could at least limit The this is so this is a me I mean this is a sto it's astonishing this puzzle has a solution because there's just nothing to go on at all nothing nothing give nothing gives you anything I hope that doesn't go down on my gravestone nothing gives you. <laughs> So, ah, this is this is nonsense. These these cells don't give you anything. Let's remove those. Should remove the pencil marks as well. Oh, how do I do that? Like that. Okay, let's have another think. Um,
I don't think I've ever felt as completely nonplussed by a Sudoku. I, d I don't know what to do. I don't even feel like I've got anything I can really think about. I just, I just don't understand how to... I don't understand what A helped's done here. Okay, if I was constructing a puzzle, what are these arrows doing? What is it they're meant to be telling me? I don't know. Um, these four cells have got to be eight different from these four cells, which means these three cells have to be eight different from these three cells. These three cells have to be one different from these three cells. There's just nothing there. These three cells have to be five different from these three cells. The problem is that, the, I mean, like these two cells don't even influence at all in any sort of Sudoku sense these, the value of these three cells. They, they don't see each other. I mean, that one sees that one, I suppose, but it's a very, very weak interrelationship let's have a look and see if we can that's a very pretty pattern I'm going to carry on highlighting how do I carry? Oh, no, no, no. I pressed the wrong button. Sorry. I, I, what I wanted to do was to um, highlight the arrow clues as well. Let's just have a look at this and see if we if we highlight everything in the grid that is. That's a little bit interesting. Let me just color everything in there. Oh, no, I'll do it in that color. The reason I thought that was interesting is, look, the cells that are missing are those four cells. Oh, I hope this isn't something like Fistmafell's trick somehow, that there is some way of... So you may remember, if you've looked at another video of ours, that there is an equa there's equality between the digits that are in this highlighted ring I've just drawn in the grid, which is 16 cells, and these two by twos in the corner, they have to contain exactly the same digits. Um, now, sorry, I'm just going to stare at this for a, a second or two, or probably several more, several more than that. Um, this heat is, I mean, it's making it impossible to solve Sudokus, I'm sure you agree. It's just, I mean, it's ridiculous to ask me to solve Sudokus when it's 35 degrees outside. Um, these four cells... had a little bit of a thought.
feel like this this is interesting. At least this at least this is something I can think about and make pretty patterns with. <sighs> but I can't quite well I say I can't quite. I don't I don't I don't even feel on the verge of understanding how to solve the puzzle. These three cells have to be five greater than these cells. See, that's a little bit interesting as well. The greater thans line up in the columns, look, and the less thans line up in the rows. Now down here, yeah, the greater thans and the less thans. Let me just, I'm going to change the highlighting a little bit just to have another look at this. Let's go, um, I'll make those, this is an important decision what colour I make these. Actually I'll keep them, I'll keep them purple and I'll make the less stands a different colour. I'll make those, uh, oh no, people like orange, what do they, people like orange and blue isn't it so I should use I should use orange and blue right I'll use I use orange for these ones and blue for these ones and let's do the same over here so orange and blue now I don't think I realize this video as well is not very good because a lot of it is just me sitting here not even I well the problem is I can't even articulate thoughts here because I'm just I just don't know what to do um, I'm not even I'm not even sure <laughs> These, these cells, these cells, what was that one? That was five. This one was eight. So these cells here are 13 at least greater than those cells. And all, all of the orange cells, was it 24, five? That was one, and the, oh, this was 10, wasn't it? So 11, 24. So all of the orange cells are 24 greater than all of the blue cells. No, actually that's not right. At least 24 greater. It could be astronomically greater. So how Ah, now there is an idea. Ah, there is an idea. Hang on, 
hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I have had an idea, I think. What I'm what I'm thinking about is these green cells. Is it possible that we do something with these rows and these columns? Because that they intersect in these four positions. So it's a bit like you may have seen before, we've done killer Sudokus where the perimeter of the grid has had to sum up to a certain thing and you we know this adds to 45 we know this adds to 45 we know that individually adds to 45 you know this individually adds to 45 but of course the sum of the perimeter is not four lots of 45 because these four squares are double counted now if we were to So how so five forty I'm wondering whether there is something going on here between the positive inequalities and the negative inequalities and the fact that they align in these in these rows and columns it's also interesting look that The cells that are sort of complete these rows and in columns after we look at the inequalities are all on the out they are all on the arrows with the exception of the, the sort of overlapping cells. Now I haven't got my head around this at all, but I I feel that there is something here. There is something um there is something about the geometry here that is nagging at me. And I can't, I can't figure out how to use it, frankly, but, but so if we were to Oh, you do, 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 do. Hang on a minute. Maybe I mustn't think about this. Hang on. I want to get my notebook. Let me get, let's get a notepad. Let's get a notepad. Let me just have a play around with something for a second here. Now, if I was going to write down this inequality at the top to get me this five number, how would I do that? Oh, typing is going to be a problem. But I would say row, row one, column three, plus row one, column four, plus row two, column three, minus row three column row, oopsie wow row three column four minus row three column five minus row two column five 
Uh, and of course, I haven't got a greater than or equals to sign on my keyboard. This is completely hopeless. But anyway, that's so that's got to be at least equal to five. So I'll put greater than four. Now, if I do the same. Yeah, I can I can transform. I can transform. I can transform at least part of these inequalities. Let, hang on, hang on a minute. Let me just carry on with this. If I, I'm going to do it for the other one as well, the other one on the screen, the 19 one. I'm sorry this is a bit boring, but I just want to, um, to be honest, I just want to see this in sort of sort written down because I'm having trouble visualizing it. Um, but row four, column three, plus row five, column two, plus row. 5 column 3 minus row 4 column 1 minus row 3 column 1. Now this is the interesting bit, look, row 3 column 2. That has to be greater than 8. Oh no, greater than 7, because it could be equal to 8. Now, if I add these together, now, is there a way of copying and pasting to do that? Because it would be a lot easier. Let's see if I can do that. If I go there and add them, add that to that bit, and then this bit, I'm going to control X, add that there, and that's going to be has all got to be greater than or equal to eleven. Is it eleven? No, it's not. It's twelve, isn't it? Because I have to increase. It's got to be. It's got to be at least equal to thirteen. So it's greater than twelve. Right now, the thing that I was looking at here is can I? I think I can. In fact, this is fascinating. If I if I add, if I add the contents of row three and I deduct the contents of column three from this equation, then I'm not changing. I'm not changing the inequality. Because we know that row 3 adds to 45, and we know that column 3 adds to 45. So if I add each individual cell along here, and deduct each individual cell along here, I don't change the sort of right-hand side of my equation. So, if that's right, I don't change the right-hand side of my equation, but loads of stuff in here is going to cancel out. So let, let me just, uh, I know this is a very dull way of doing this, but I think I need to do it because it's the only way I think I'll convince myself this might have any legs at all. So let's do this. Row 3, column 3, plus row 4, column... Uh, what am I doing here? Row, th row 3, column 4, plus row 3, column 5, plus row 3, column 6, plus row 3, column 7, plus row 3, column 8, plus row 3, column 9. So that equals... 45. Now, if I add these two equations together, I think, because look, look, loads of this, loads of this equation, row 3, column 1, row 3, column 2, are these two 
pieces. Row 3, column 4 and row 3, column 5 are those two pieces. And if I also did the same with this, so if I add this in order to get rid of these squares, and I deduct this column to get rid of these squares, my inequality is going to be between these squares and these squares. Now these are interesting because these are on the arrows. So just going back to my notepad here. So if we actually did this, if I actually did this for the row, row one, column three stays in, row one, column four stays in, all of the all of the pluses stay in because they aren't affected. But the minuses most certainly don't stay in. If I add these two equations together, this cell and this cell disappear. Row two, column five does not disappear. That is not affected. Row four, column one, is not affected. These two drop out as well. And what I'm going to get left with here, so row three, column one, row three, column two are knocked out. Row three, column four and row three, column five are knocked out. And what oh, this is, this, this is it. This is it. Because look, what I end up with here let me show you is this 47 that's going to be 45 that's going to be equal to 57 and I'm going to take all of these squares and plonk them in my equation here so I get this now why does this matter I realize all of a sudden actually my, my head is going to be obscured uh, I'm going to have to move my head during the video editing, assuming I can solve the puzzle. But now, what have we got? We've got a great big long equation. But now I can deduct from this equation column 3. Now, if I was to express column 3 in exactly the same way, i.e. row 1, column 3, plus row 2, column 3, plus row 3, column 3, blah, 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 equals 45, and I deduct it from this equation, then every cell in this equation, firstly, this side will go back to being 12 again, and every single cell in column 3 in this equation is that's a plus is going to disappear. So that's going to disappear. Row 4 is going to disappear. Boom. Row, that one doesn't, just column three. All the column three terms disappear. Let's get rid of that plus. All the column three disappear. That's the row three, column three, which I've just added to the equations and deducted again. That disappears. Um, and we end up with this. Now, have I got any column three? No, I've not got any. So this is a way of representing these equations now this this is I think massive because let's actually now take a stare at which cells are left because row one column four if I press on oh, it's going to disappear oh no I don't know how to make it row one column four is this one row five column two is obviously this one this one is going to stay in this one's going to stay in and then other than that we're just going to be left with these cells in row three, which are on the arrow. I can see, I can see how to do this now. And, and this square. But look, I can repeat this. I can repeat this trick on this column and this row. Now, I... I think I'm going to delete the colouring of the arrows now. I'm going to get rid of that. Oh, my, my circles have disappeared. Ah, how do I make those come back? Come back. Ah, I can make them come back like that. Good. Now, 
So what we're going to end up with here, I'm going to, so I'm going to be able to get rid of these squares from the inequality, get rid of these squares from the inequality. All of those turn white. These squares all pop up in the inequality. And, and what am I doing to this row? I was adding this row because I wanted to get rid of the negative terms. So these squares all turn orange. They are all pluses. They are all on the plus side of my equation. In this column, I was deducting in order to get rid of the additions. So these all turn blue. These are going to disappear altogether. The reason that the corner squares disappear is I'm adding this row and deducting this row. So these squares have no effect. Obviously, they are plused and minused from my equation. Now, I've got to do the same thing to this column and this row. Oh my god, I've just seen what's going to happen here. Oh my god, look, look. The... I'm going to... Am I going to be able to cancel out because these are going to be on the arrows? If... If these are opposite colours, I can cancel. They are going to be opposite colours. Oh, good grief. This, this is it. This is it. So let me just complete the logic here. So what we need to do with my equation, wherever my equation was, let's get it back. So this is the shortened form of the equation relating to the sort of top left hand side of the grid. Now, what I need to do is to complete this approach using column seven and row seven of the grid. So I need to I need to remove these positive terms from the equation. So I need to deduct column seven from the grid. Now, if I deduct column seven from the grid, these cells disappear and these cells all become blue because they are minus terms in my equation. This row, I need to deduct those four cells. Ah, uh, no, hang on. I need to add. I need to add, don't I? I need to, I need to get rid of these negative terms in the inequality. So I'm going to add row seven to my inequality. So those disappear and these pop up on the other side. So I, I end up with this. And this, this is the holy grail that we've been looking for because my equation now is the same as it was. I now know that the difference between the orange squares and the blue squares is equal to 24, as it's always been, because of what I've done is I've added two lots of 45 and I've deducted two lots of 45 or cells worth 45 from my equation. Now, the, the thing that's so fascinating is look at the, look at what he's done. This is this is absolutely deliberate. These arrows are equal. So this plus term in my equation is equal to the, the sum of these minus terms in my equation. So they just disappear from the equation. I can just cancel them out. And look, it's the same. It's the same for every arrow in the grid. These can be cancelled. These can be cancelled. Oh, misclick. These cancel, these cancel. They all dis they oh, they all disappear, but that's okay. We can bring that and now Ah Okay, so well I've I've simplified the question after forty five minutes. I've still got no digits in the grid, but I now know that the Orange squares minus the blue squares is equal, is greater than, oh, hang on, what are we doing here? Yeah, it's greater than or equal to 24. Uh, this must be... Oh, no way. No. Am I meant to use... Oh, good... Gr good grief.
This puzzle, this puzzle will go down in the history of Sudoku. I tell you that for nothing. This will go down in the history of Sudoku. I think what we're meant to do now is to use these dominoes. Oh my goodness, we, we are, I think, because... So, if that's right, I just want to think about this for a second. We have been presented with a load of inequalities in the grid, a load of arrows in the grid, and dominoed inequality squares, and we've had to use all of them together. This is, this is beyond... This is beyond anything I have ever seen in a Sudoku puzzle. But what I think, I know this is an, it's the orange squares are pluses in my equation. So if this square was equal to A, what's the value of this square? Well, it's A plus something. I don't know what that, I don't know what this is, but it's, it's A plus something. So, if I want to use this square in the equation rather than this square, how am I going to do that? I've got to, the, the way that the equation will change is that because this square equals a plus something, a equals this square minus something. This is it, this is it, this is it. It's 28, isn't it? It's 28, and the only way you can create a difference of 28 is if you use the biggest digits. You use 8 and 9 and 1 and 2. Oh, my God. This this is it. Right, so I now have finally, after 50 minutes of video, this is probably not... I don't know if this will ever appear. This is going to be such a long video. But we've got... So... In terms of my equation, which obviously consists of these plus, let's A plus B plus C plus D minus W, X, Y, and Z, whatever are in the blue squares. That's what we've got at the moment. But look, I can replace A, if this square is A, with, with what's ever in this square and add one to my inequality because I know that this is at least equal to that square plus one. So I can do the same down here, switch these two over, these two become there, and I can do the same in these two squares. Now these two squares are negative terms in my inequality, so let me just... And this square is greater than this square. So if this square was equal to alpha, x, equal, x equals alpha plus 1 x equals alpha plus something. Yes. So that means that this square gets added to... It's perfect. It's perfect. These two squares get added to the right, to the right side of my inequality. Now, I don't know what the value of these squares is. I don't know how much they differ from these squares. But I know that they differ by at least one each. And that's all I need to know. Because my... Inequality, therefore, if I replace the blues with those squares instead, now becomes a plus b plus c plus d minus x, what, well, w, x, y, z, whatever I, I do that. But that has to be greater than or equal to 28. And now we've, we haven't done the puzzle, but we have got a restriction I can use because how do I make these squares differ by this total? There's only one way. I have to make the, the plus squares as huge as I possibly can. If I make them all 8 and 9, and I make all of the blue squares as tiny as I can, make them all 1 and 2, now let's see what the equation gives us. It gives us 34 for the pluses, and 6 for the minuses. 34 minus 6, which is the absolute most I can, I can create the difference is equal to 28. 
So although the inequality is greater than or equal to 28, I can't make it any bigger than 28. It just is 28. And this is what this puzzle was trying to show us. I am, I have to say, I'm quite proud that I've even got this far. And now we've got to actually use this to solve the puzzle. So there are a few things we can do here though, because now, now we know a lot more than we did before about all these inequalities. We know that they are actually they, they are all the value they have to be. So this was presented to us as greater than or equal to 26. Well, it can't be any greater than 26. This was less than or equal to 21. It can't be less than 21 because I can't create a bigger difference than the, the 28 I've managed to create. So what we actually know now is that this is 26. This is 21. This is 11. This is 19, etc. We also know, actually, that this square and this square can't differ by more than one, because if they did, again, the inequality would break. So this square, if that's a one and a two, that's a two or a three, that's a two and a three, this has to got to be a seven or an eight, and that's got to be a seven or an eight. I'm going to put that equation on my wall. It won't mean anything to anyone who sees it apart from me, but... <laughs> um, now... How do we solve the puzzle now? <laughs> um, I've had 52 minutes of this video and I still haven't entered a digit in the grid. Look, this column, those five squares have got to be three, five, or three, four, five, six, seven, and the same in the row. Oh, bother. Uh, let's do it like this three, four, five, six, seven. Now, uh, phone's buzzing at me. I want to, I need to remove those squares because they, they were my inequality records, weren't they? Oh God, imagine doing all of this early work and then not being able to solve the killer Sudoku or the, oh my goodness. Uh, right, so uh, that one might be restricted look because that has to equal 21 and these two squares can't be too large. Ah, ah yes, now hang on, these two squares if this is 9, this is 8. If this is 8, this is 7. There's always an 8 in there. So actually, I must move that. There's always an 8 in here. And the same will work, work for 2s on these two sides. So now, if there's no 8 in this 21... Yes, got it. Right, now, is it possible there's no 9 in this 21? If there's no 9... The maximum I can make those three squares would be 5, 6 and 7, which add up to 18. 18 plus 2 is 20. I can't get to 21, so there must be a 9 in this 2 by 2, and it must be in those cells. And therefore, we get it. Yes, I've done it. I've got a digit. This square can't be a 9. That's an 8. That's a 7. So this is a 9, and this is an 8. And that can't be a seven, obviously. That can't be a seven. Eight 
8 got to live uh, let's fa let's label up these squares in the middle they've got to be 1 2 8 9 these can't be 8 anymore and these can't be 9 anymore so the 9's definitely in one of these squares the 8's definitely in one of these squares So we've now got nine. Is this restricted at all if we can't use seven and eight? Nine, five, fourteen. Ah, ah, yes, it is. It is restricted. These have to sum to twenty one. So if there's no six in this sum, how would we do that? Well, the only way of getting, if there's no six, seven or eight, the only way of getting to 12, which is what we need in, in addition to the nine, is three, four and five. But we can't have three, four and five because this square can't be a three, four or a five. So we know there's a six in one of these squares. 15. Hmm. Now, so one of those squares has got to be a six. Can we use that to tell us anything? It's not obvious. At least it's, I should say, it's not obvious to me how to do that. Um, seven, look, Se seven has to be in this 15 sum down here. So one of those three squares has to be a seven. That means the other three squares have to add up to eight. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. This seven is important. Right. So now if I know that these squares have got to be a triple adding up to eight plus the seven that I know is within those within this two by two, then the triple, the eight the triple that adds to eight is either one, two, five, or one, three, four. It doesn't contain a six. So there must be a six down this side of box eight. And therefore there's no six in these two squares. And therefore that square is the only option for the six that I need up here. So that removes six from all sorts of squares in column five and locks a six into one of two positions in box five, so this can't be a six and this can't be a six. Okay, now that felt like it was useful. But how does it help us crack the puzzle more? So, so I've now, I now know I've got cells summing to 15 here. The other two cells have got to sum up to exactly six and what, there's a one, two. So this is four, five, nine into these squares. Ah, hang on a minute. If this is, right, here's some more logic. Here's some more logic, look. If this square isn't a four or a five, where do we put four and five in this box? They'd have to both be in this quadruple here, but one of these squares is a seven. So seven plus four plus five is too large. So this square, which is the only square that can be, has to be a four or a five. And therefore this square is a six. It's the only option for a six in this um, box and this is a four or five so the seven must be down here this can't be a seven anymore 
And it can't be a 3, can it? Because the 3 must also be in these three squares. Because it can't be here. So this square can't be a 3. So 7 is in one of these two squares. This is a 4, 5, 9 triple. Ah. So where's... Yeah, where's 3 going in this column? It's got to be down here. Now if three is down here, it can't be in this it can't be in our eight. So the eight must be one, two, and five. Now how does that matter? That can't be a four therefore. So these squares here are one, two, and seven. This is a, f we can remove five from all of those squares. Five can only go here now. Therefore, this isn't five. This isn't five. This one, two, seven triple makes this three, four, and three, four, and six, is that? This square up here is going to be a five and a four. That's 14. So that's got to be a one. This is a two. 1, 7 here, so we get rid of the 1's there, we get rid of the 2's there. Now, what do we do next? Two, two. Oh, now I've broken this. I've got twos here and two here and no two up here. Ah, what have I done wrong? Let me just go back a bit. I've done something wrong, obviously. I'm not sure. Four, five, nine. I remember doing that. That. These have to add to 21. That That's right. Well, I say it's right. What did I do after that? I got rid of this square and said that was a 4 or a 5. Is that where I went wrong? Is it the logic on this column? Oh, no, it's the opposite. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I did the wrong, I did exactly the opposite of what I was intending to do. I've got to not put four and five in here, and somehow I put a four and five in there, didn't I? Oh, I did this the other day as well. I sort of explained logic in great detail, which was very clever, and then totally did the opposite of the thing that I just explained. So this square cannot be a four or a five, which means it has to be. A three, six, or seven, I think. There must be a four or a five in this group, but I don't know which. This can't be a seven because of the seven up there. This can't be a six, so this is have to be a three. Oh, I'm getting confused and tired here. Let me just go back and have another think about this. If this is a four, five, nine triple, I have to put four and five into my eight, tri eight triumvirate. That does, does not work. This is definitely not four or five. It's not six because of this. It's not seven because of this. This is three. That's that's going to work now better because now that forces three into my eight cage, which means this must be one, three, and four. So this square has got to be a one. This square can't be a five, therefore. This must be three, four, and seven. These squares can't be three. This square can't be three. Ah, that must be a six. I think I had that before. This can't be a three. This can't be a three. 
If this is 3, 4, and 7, these squares are 2, 5, and 6. This, ooh, that can't be a 2, because that would be saying both of those squares have to be a 1. 4, 5, 9. This 1, ah, we get another digit in the grid. That's a 2. These add up to 8, so those must add up to 13. So these are... These are 4 and 9 rather than 5 and 9. Which we could have got from the fact these have a 5 in them, of course. And those squares have got to be 1, 3 and 5 in some order. They can't have a 1 as the sum of an arrow. This is quite small, look. So those two squares have got to be taken from these digits because neither of them could be a 5 because that would break the arrow total. 1, 3, 5 here means there's no 1 in these squares, so this becomes 2, 9. We can remove 2 from there. This becomes 1, 8. 4, 5, 7 here means this is the 3. Wow. Okay, so we're back on track. Um... We're back on track, but, and I've sort of resolved, well, not resolved, but at least I've disambiguated these ones, twos, eights, and nines in column five. So I guess I've got to do the same thing. This can't be a seven, can it? If that's a seven, oh, it could be. If that's a seven and that's an eight, these two would have to add up to five they couldn't use a 2, but they could be 1 and 4. Yeah, they could be 1 and 4. Bother. Um, so what about this side? If this was... Uh, maybe this side is better. If this was a 7, that could be an 8. That would be 15. These would have to add up... Ah, that is better, look. This can't be a 7. Because if it's a 7, we break the 19 total. Um, I think that's definitely good logic because 7 and 8, we have to make those 4. If we do, we can't put a 1 or a 3 into these squares and we know there must be a 1 or a 3 in those squares. So that is fine. This is not 7. This square... We know that from the early logic, which feels like it was sort of a month ago, those two squares have to sum up to at least 10. So even if this was 5, this would still have to be 5 or more. This has to be 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9. Same logic over here. This square has to be at least 4. 6, 7, 8, 9. There's a plane going by outside. To salute a helps puzzle, no doubt. Um, now, I mean, even after, even after that crazy beginning, the the actual Sudoku part of this. I mean, I'm probably missing stuff now, but this this is not straightforward. Um, so. Can we do more here? If this, if this is eight, and this is five, if this is eight, five, thirteen, these have to ah eight, five. That's interest. Ah, no, that that is interesting. If this is eight and this is five, these two add up to thirteen. These have to add up to six without using a five. They'd have to be two and four, and that would break because there's a two definitely in one of those squares. So if this is 8, this cannot be 5. This would have to be 8 and 4. Let's look at that. 8, 4. If this is 8, 4, these two have to add up to 7 now. Without using a 2 or a 4, they'd have to be 1 and 6. They'd have to be 1 and 6. Is there a problem with that? I would put a 2 here, a 1 here, and a 9 here. 
Ah, there might be a problem over here with that. Eight four one six. Let me just look at this. Sorry, uh, one six here. This becomes a two. This becomes a one nine. Now I'm just wondering because this can't be four anymore. And now I've got a one here. Can this work? These have to add to 20. So you can see this can't be a seven and it can't be a four. Now, can it be a five? 14. These have to add up to six. No, they, it can't be because this, this is making this a two. And now I can't make those two squares add up to six. This doesn't work. Whoa. Okay. Right. Good. Um, so this, okay, let's go all the way back here. This is not eight. This is nine. This is eight. Now, does that help us? This can't be nine anymore. This can't be eight anymore. So if this is, if this is five, nine, five here, these squares have to add up to five without using a two. They'd have to be one and four. That looks possible. If this is nine four, on the other hand, these have to add up to thirteen nine four. These have to add up to six. They have to be one and five. But that's so that would go three two. I don't know this this. I suppose what we can say actually that's a little bit interesting is what are the values of these two squares? Because if this is, whether this is four or five, I think these two squares have to be also one, four and five because these three squares need to add up to 10 without using a two. So if this is a four, the only way of getting those two squares to 10 is with one and five. If this is a five, these two squares have to add up to five without using two. They have to be one and four. So this is a one, four, five. Oh, and this is useful. This is a one, four, five triple. So this square is a two. That gives us a one over there, two and a three. Um, this square can't be a four or a five anymore. In fact, these three squares have got to be six, seven and eight. That, that gives us that one, one, eight. This square can't be a seven. Oh, it can, no, it can't be a seven. Sorry. This has to be a nine. This has to be a two. So these squares now are a little bit, ah, these squares have to include a three look by Sudoku. So now, and one, two isn't possible. Ah, so now this can't be a 7, because that would be 15 here. We'd need these two squares to add to 5. Impossible if we can't use 1 and 2. So that's not... Ah, that gives us a 7 in the middle. Right. 1, 4, 5, triple in row 4. Let's take 5 out of the arrow square. These squares have to be 6, 7, and 9, I think. So these have to be 3, 4, and 5. 12 and 8 is 20. That looks good, doesn't it? So I think we're still on track. Uh, I say on track. 1 minute 14 into the video. Oh my goodness. Um, so where is the next step? <laughs> in this remarkable, remarkable puzzle. Can this be a four? If that's a four, 11, these two have to add up to 15. Ah, that's possible. In fact, six, nine, uh, it would have to be six, nine though, but that's still possible. The arrow with clues. If this was a six, Two here. Hmm, not sure. If I knew this, if this was a three, I'd know this wasn't a six. I mean, even at this point of the puzzle, it's still 
holding out, isn't it? It's not easy, this. And as usual, you know, I'm so sorry if a lot of what I've done today has been really sort of, I've been slow about. I'm just quite sure that's the case with a 1 minute 15 video. Um, six, five, six here. Ah, maybe this one. Maybe this one, because there's a... This is, this is interesting. Look, if that's a six, I can't make these two squares one and five, because then I'd have to put the numbers one, four, and five into four different cells, and that, we can't have duplicate cells, obviously. So this, if this is a six, this has to be... This has to be 2, 4. If, on the other hand, this square is a 5, the same thing happens. Look, I can't make these 1 and 4 because that, that gives me the same problem. I'd have 1, 4, and 5 into 4 different cells. So this would ha So this has to be 2... Oh, this has to be 2, 3, or 4. Oh, that one's obviously a 5 or a 6 still. So there's always a two, look. There's always a two in this little domino here. And there's always a two in this little domino here. So where does two go in row seven of the grid? It can't go there, it can't go there. So it must be in one of these three squares. Now, please, can it go here? If it goes here, we'd have four, we'd need... Oh, yeah. No, it can't, it can't go there, because if this is a two, we'd have we'd have to make those two add up to 15. That's not possible, because that can only be a five. So the two goes here. So there's no two up there. Oh, now look, there's no two up here now. So this can't be three, because if this is three, that has to be a one, two pair. So this is, this is five. This is five and it adds up to, it can't use a two in the sum. So it's one and four. That gives us a five here, a four here. Three, four here gives me a five there, four here. Four here gives me locks of four out of those two squares. So this, these have to sum up to five. That gives me a five there. Um, ah, look, that square now can't be a 6, because if this is a 6, these two squares either have to be 1, 4, sorry, 1, 5, or 2, 4. Neither of those are possible. This is not 6. Now seven would be one six. It could only be one six. Eight it could only be one seven. So I think there's a one in these two squares. There's a one in one of those. Oh, can this be a one? If this is a one, those two add up to nine. These two, ah, oh, seven, uh, seven, nine, still possible. Bobbins. Um, Two, three here, two, three here. So there's a two, three pair up at the top. This square, look, there's a one, four pair in this square. So this square can't be six because one, we can't make six in two digits if we can't use a one or a four. So this is seven or nine. Ah, brilliant. Look, this can't be seven because if it's seven, how do I make that domino add up to seven? I can't use one, six, two, five, or three, four. This is a nine. This, so that's not nine. For how long ago does it feel? I was looking at these nines. I've still got them penciled in the grid. Um, now, these two squares, therefore, have to be, they have to sum to nine without being one, eight. 
without being 3, 6 or 4, 5. These are 2 and 7. There's a 2 here. We get them. 2, 7, 7, 6. Please keep going. Please keep going. There's a 7 down there now. Ah. Uh, 6, look. These 6s here and here. I mean, there's a six in one of those two squares. That's interesting, because that means there's a six down here. Oh, this is great. So if there's a six down here, not only do we know that this six and six, seven and eight add to 21, so there's definitely no one in here anymore. This must be the one. We also know this must be a four in order to make this total 25. So we get a seven there. And that one, if this is 8, how do we make 8 work? 1, 7 doesn't work, 2, 6 doesn't work, 3, 5 doesn't work, this is a 7. And please let that work. I think it does with 1, 6, doesn't it? Because 2, 5 and 3, 4 are ruled out. So I think 1, 6 is the only way that can work. That locks 6s into these squares, which gives us a 6 at the top in the 26 cage. So... 13. We need the other two squares to be thir 13. Ah, but there's a 4 here. So we can't have the... F we know that there's a 4-9 pair, therefore, along with the 6-7 pair. But the 4 can only go in this square. So I think that has to be the 4. That has to be the 9. These two squares are a 6-9 pair. Four here fixes the four and the one, the one and the three. This square can't be a two because of the two there. Four fixes the four and the three. Eight must live here in the in the column. Those three squares have got to be 1, 3 and 4 now. But this can't be a 3. Oh, so if this is a 5, it breaks. Because that they would add to 8, I'd have to use 1 and 2 there, which I can't. So this has to be a 1. That gives me a 5 here. This can't be 1 now. The 1 fixes the 1 and the 6. Am I going to solve this puzzle, please? Six, eight. Eight must be here by Sudoku. These, these add up to four. These add up to seven. That only works one way. That's four, three, one. Four, four must be here by Sudoku. Nine is not here because of the nine in the column. These are not three anymore. Where does 2 go? There must be a 2 in one of those squares. And there's a 2 here. So the 2 can be placed. These two squares are 7 and 5. It's still working. 7, 5. This is a 7, 9 pair at the bottom of that column. Those two squares have got to be 5 and 8. There's a 5 there. That's still working. 8 must be here by Sudoku. These two squares, look, have got to be 4 and 9. You'll forgive me being incredibly slow about this. Um, 5 here, locks of 5 in the corner. Now please let this 3 disambiguate. It's going to... <gasps> right, just this box and this this to do we've got in this these two squares have got to be five and six five tells us the order five six six nine nine three check yeah. i did it <laughs> oh my goodness me oh um 
Wow. Wow. Uh, I don't even know what to say in summing up this puzzle. This is this is undoubtedly a puzzle that will go down in the history of Sudoku puzzles. Um, I have never in my life seen a puzzle like that before. I doubt anyone has. I mean, that 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 is staggering. It's staggering that you can come up after 20 what years of Sudoku, somebody can come up with something that is completely original. Um, that is mesmerizing. The start of this puzzle is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, can I just duplicate this tab? Will that work? Yeah, here we go. So let's just take a quick look at this. I mean, the video is long enough already. Another minute or two is the least this puzzle deserves. But this setup, the way the geometry works is that you have to use every sing, literally every single piece of information in this grid is, I think, essential to start the puzzle. I mean, have you ever seen anything like that? Every single one of these inequalities, every single one of these arrows, and every single one of the domino inequalities is necessary to even begin to think about how to solve this puzzle. I mean, this is... I know I use the word a lot, but this is genius. Um, this is absolute genius. I am privileged. I'm so privileged to tackle puzzles like this. Um, I'm so glad I got through it. Um, and now I'm going to call Mark, actually, and find out whether he solved it or not. Um, but that that is a work of absolute art. And um, I'm so sorry it's taken me an hour and a half to solve it. But, I, you know, it. what a puzzle. What a puzzle. What a puzzle. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.